Good. This is How my first you? little round table thing. My first Comic Con. I'm having a good day. Yeah. yeah. It's cute. It's wild here. Very wild. <laughs> Very wild. I'm living my best life. It's great. So what did you fall in love with about Sybil? I mean, I love myself. And Sybil <laughs> reminds me a lot of me. So I saw a lot of myself in her and that was easy to fall in love with. She's so funny, so feisty, but she's also very loyal. We have the same traits, and um, it was very easy to bring her to life. I did not worry. I wasn't thinking, oh, would she say this? Yes, if I would say it, Sybil would say it. So, um, yeah, it was a great experience. The whole thing was perfect. Have you ever worked in this sort of medium before? In Britain, I had my first ever thing I wrote was like a comedy series, which was on the radio, on the BBC. So I was used to like, I've comedy acted before for audio. And so I just haven't done that in America on this scale. And that was just a pilot. This is a major series. And so, yeah, I went into it thinking I knew exactly what to do. I'm very good at sight reading. I can bang out a script. They call me One Take London, we'll smash it out. <laughs> it will be fine. And it was like, no, you have to act. Like I was sweating. I was like, uh, uh, everything, uh, 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 I'm fighting demons like everything's going on and I'm just like oh this is hard work like I'm an actor not an actor so really I just have the best time like getting to fall around in the booth and just do go crazy and um, I hope they actually did film that because that was best. it would have been very interesting to watch that back but uh, I had the best time and have fun behind the scenes behind the scenes of London Hughes as Sybil like I really got into we it to see that yeah I would, I would pay to see it was a lot of fun yeah. especially my scenes of Will Wheaton oh we were shouting at each other like and I could see him in the booth opposite me I could see his little head just and he's in character as Robert is screaming at me and I'm screaming at him and I'm like Will Wheaton screaming at me what is my life so yeah essentially I just it was a dream it was a dream to do <laughs> so were all of the sessions like that where you were actually in the room with the person that you were no. acting with? No, so, a lot, so I, a lot of the cast I have still not met, but it was mainly me and Felicia together, and then Felicia would read in the parts of other people and the parts of herself. So sometimes she'd be being Laurel, her character, then she'd be Robert Gus, Will Wheaton's character, and then for some major scenes it would be me and Will, and for some other scenes it would be me, Felicia and Lily, and so, yeah, it was a mixture, but most of the time, even though they were in the room with me, we were in separate booths within that room, so we were never, I could never touch them, which was very weird. So after takes, I'd be like, I want to hug, and I'd like, leave the booth and hug them, or go and hang out in Felicia's booth, and yeah, because I'm like, if I'm on a project with, with people, I want you to be my friends, so yeah, it was really weird trying to get a relationship when you couldn't touch the person, but I could at least see them and hear them, so it worked for me. Cool. So the story has to do with like supernatural creatures or here on Earth. What do you hope would be a supernatural creature that would be here on Earth? Oh God, a, um, an emotionally intelligent man? Uh, <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> I would love that. Emotionally intelligent, emotionally available, you know, just a nice, good looking man, a nice husband for me. That would be the supernatural creature I want on earth. It doesn't exist right now. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. That's a great answer. Great answer. Oh, fans listening to this, uh, what do you hope that they take away from this program? Oh, gosh. I feel like they're going to be addicted. They're going to be obsessed with the characters. The ca characters are so deep. They're so much backstory she's put Felicia's put so much work into the world I want them to fall in love with us fall in love with the world and then it would be very cool if you know just while they were driving they were like oh could dwarves own a cash for gold shop like is that <laughs> could that be real like it's just we're all look the world is hard enough right now as it is we all need a bit of escapism a bit of imagination and fun and this does that it transports you to another world in a way that watching a movie couldn't because it's so it, it envelops all your senses especially with all the sound effects so yeah i really hope they become as addicted to the show as i am and that it turns into a worldwide global franchise and then there's third eye theme parks all over the world that's what i hope happens <laughs> 
was there a scene that you're like was so much fun to film that you just remember like off the bat yeah the final episode episode 10 oh my gosh it's so much drama I can't reveal it but let me <laughs> tell you I was sweating there was demons that was chasing and running and then spells and everything it was like it was it was like a crash course in everything fantasy in one episode my character went through it there was heartbreak there was love there was I'm giving spoilers away, but essentially, <laughs> the, the final episode was my favourite episode to do. Um, it was very, very full on and very funny as well, which with these fantasy dramas you don't often get, and the balance between funny and fantasy is perfect. Are you a fantasy person? Is this your genre? No, it's really not, and it's funny because it could be. I used to be a person that was like, no, nope, I'm not going to watch any of these things. I won't watch Game of Thrones. I won't. And then I watched Game of Thrones and I loved it. So I'm very stubborn when it comes to <laughs> fantasy stuff. Like, I literally was like, I haven't watched all the Harry Potter movies. I've just watched the first one three times. And <laughs> because I, I, thought I'd, I was like, I've seen all Harry Potters. My friend's like, no, you've watched the first one a few times from different bits because I keep falling asleep. Like, that is, that's how I take to like the fantasy world. But once I'm involved, I'm involved, and I, it takes. I'm very stubborn. It takes me a while to want to get into it, but then it has me hooked, and that's what this will. For anyone who's not a fantasy fan, this is also their show, because you go in it thinking, oh, okay, I get it, I've been here before, and you have it. It twists on its head, and it's so engaging, but so modern in a way that everyone can relate to it, even if you're not a massive fantasy fan. But if you are a fantasy fan, it has so many nods to the genre that you're going to enjoy it as well. So yeah, it's for everybody. Speaking of fantasy, you said there's some Final Fantasy references. Yeah, this. there are. So I played Final Fantasy when I was a kid, and I remember that I had a very funny line about it, but I didn't quite get it, Felicia had to explain it to me. But essentially, Felicia is so good at combining the modern pop culture references in this fantasy world because it's set now. So it's modern day. So essentially, yeah, expect to mix the 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 weird world of like dwarves and stuff with like the Kardashians, because that is <laughs> that is literally. I mean, the dwarves are like Kardashians in a way, anyway. But yes, they mix together, and so yeah, the juxtaposition between the two was great to to read and to be a part of, and yeah, it was really fun playing along. Can you give me like for those that aren't necessarily familiar with audible shows like this and someone like that's averted like has an aversion to fantasy can you give me like a 30 second pitch of why everyone should check this oh out Oh my gosh everyone should check out further because London Hughes is so funny in it <laughs> as Sybil the fairy but not only does it play with fantasy genre, it twists and turns and gives you an example of modern day fantasy and what it would be like to really wake up one day and have all your life be magical. And again, London Hughes is so good in it <laughs> that you wouldn't want to miss the star turn as Sybil fairy. It's really Beyonce in audible form. And so for that reason, you should definitely check out Third Eye. Like I said, London Hughes is in it. <laughs> Is that enough? Is that that's perfect. perfect. Okay, great. That's so good. Great. Love that. Season two is basically Sybil the Fairy. Yeah, Sybil the Fairy yeah. and where she meets the Kardashians in LA. That's season two. I'm sure Felicia's working on it now. She's a very hard worker. So, yeah. But it was a lot of fun. It was so much fun to do. As you can see, I'm Sybil the Fairy. I love it. Did you get to have any input on any of the lines? Yeah. Oh, God. I didn't need to because she's such a good writer. But yeah, because I'm British, she She'd write things that are Americanized, and I've got to make them British. Like I might be drinking a cup of tea instead of a can of beer or whatever, you know? So little things like that. And just adding my comedy, je ne sais quoi, to the lines and just ad living some stuff and improv some stuff and like my tone, like the way I say things, my tone, I can play around with that. Yeah, she really let me make it my own. And so did Jonah, our director. It was a great process. It's a lot of fun. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day.